So lots of questionable moments from the final play of that game. The refs admitted they should have called an offensive foul on Deion Waiters as he was inbounding the ball. Stephen A., what was your reaction to that game? Well, I thought San Antonio blew it. I thought they came out not nearly as focused as they were in game one. Uh, as Skip articulated, you know, they didn't respond to the challenge that the Thunder inevitably were going to throw in their direction. They didn't just lose game one. They were absolutely humiliated. And you knew with the greatness that Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook has inside themselves that they were going to respond and respond fiercely. You had questions about other guys. You certainly had questions about Coach Billy Donovan and what he was going to be able to do against the great Greg Popovich. But at the same time, you knew they were going to respond. That was clearly an offensive foul. Um, at the end with Deion Wade is trying to inbounds the ball against Manu Ginobili. But, again, I, I'm not paying much attention to that call because even on the pass, Danny Green still stripped Kevin Durant. The ball was still in Patty Mills' hands, who got it to Manu Ginobili, who got it back to Patty Mills. So they, they, there's no question that something, you know, the Spurs had their chance. Manu Ginobili accurately and astutely pointed that out. And as a result, it just is what it is. So it's tied 1-1. And to me, we're going to find out again. We, we were wondering what the OKC Thunder were, were made of. Now we're going to find out what the Spurs are made yeah. of because for the first time all season long, they've been put in this hole. And I don't want to sound disrespectful to the Spurs because I'm certainly not doing that. But it's important to know this. These are not the same old San Antonio Spurs. You've got some of the same age-old veterans on the squad with Tim Duncan, Mono Ginobili, Tony Parker. You also have Patty Mills still on the squad and Danny Green. But this is Kawhi Leonard and LaMarcus Aldridge's team. And so because they're the focal points of this offense, it's a precarious position for San Antonio to be in now because it's unfamiliar territory for those two individuals. Even though Kawhi Leonard was there before, you know, when he played for the Spurs before when they were in one hole after another, he wasn't the man. This year, he's the man with LaMarcus Aldridge. So in order for them to win an OKC, those two are going to have to respond. Yep. <sighs> so... I'm, I'm back. The more I watch the video of this, the more it sticks in my craw, Stephen A. Smith. What happened last night just tore my heart out because I, I'm going to stress this to you. I watch every Spurs game. Manu Ginobili has turned back the clock this year. Five years, seven years. He, he's going on 39 years of age in July. And as you know, it was iffy whether he was even going to come back and play at all this year. And he decided at the last second, yeah, I've got it in me. Fire's still lit. I'm going to give it a shot. He lost a few more pounds. His body looks great. And trust me, the little stretches he was out, they missed him because he is their closer. He is the one at the end of close games, and they won almost all their close games this year except for the Golden State game in San Antonio. I was very comfortable when Manu had the ball in his hands in late game clutch close situations. So last night again, back to your point, clearly it was an offensive foul. But it was funny because at the end of the game, and I know you were watching, you and I might have been the only two left awake at that point, but but Chris Webber, who's who's doing an outstanding job, I I, I got to say he has grown leaps and bounds as a, a color commentator. He an really analyst. is. He He's really, really is. good. He really now. is. Funny yes, and witty is. and insightful. He starts screaming at the end of the game. It's an offensive foul on Ginobili. Well, we couldn't see what he was talking about because we, we weren't focused on the inbounds pass. We were focused on Danny Green's steal and then the mad scramble up the court at the end of the game. So he's yelling, it's an offensive foul on Ginobili. And I'm thinking, how? What, what did Manu do? I thought he meant Manu charged, you know, like he, he barreled into Steven Adams and it should have been called somehow. And I couldn't get it through my head. What is he talking about until we finally started to see the replay? So now everything fixated back on something that no one had ever seen before, and that was the inbounds passer actually elbowing a defender to create space to get the ball inbounds. the show today yes it was an offensive foul 
Ginobili did step across the line, but they never call that. And I, I don't think they would have called it last night. It just, it's, it's just not that big a deal. But by the letter of the law, he did step across the line. I believe that Waiters got more than five seconds to inbounds the ball. My point is, under any scenario, pro Spurs there, they're going to get the ball out of bounds right there with 13.5 seconds left. I like their chances better. I thought they caught a break. No timeouts. Danny Green steals the ball. I like it. Ginobili gets the ball in his hands, obviously Patty Mills first. But all of a sudden, I look back at that video again and again, and I think of Manu 10 years ago, 15 years ago. That guy who, who took Argentina to, to gold in the Olympics, he's driving the ball on Steven Adams. You know and I know, a few years back, Manu just makes things happen in the lane. Either he's going to do some dipsy doodle shot and make it off the glass, or he might even, at some point, he might have even dunked it or tried to. He's going to get fouled by Steven Adams, or he's going to get Steven Adams up off his feet, and he's going to no look bounce it to Kawhi, who actually had posted up inside of Ibaka on the other side of the lane. Now, again, would Kawhi have been able to dunk it? Maybe not, but he would have gotten fouled. So I just gave you four scenarios that are lane scenarios. And instead, Manu gave up quickly, again, going on age 39, and just said, eh, I can't do that anymore. I don't have those legs anymore. And he no look flips it over his shoulder to a Patty Mills who was already 0 for 5 in the fourth quarter and wound up 0 for 6 with the ill-fated three from the corner. I, I just don't love the play. My Spurs had a chance to steal a home game they had no business winning, and well, they even blew that play. That's me. It wasn't, but it wasn't a play. I mean, it wasn't like it was no. something orchestrated no. or whatever. It's just, you know, you, 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 you're operating extemporaneously off sure. the fly. And uh, Amanu Ginobili, you're only down one. You're not down three. So no. you didn't need a three-pointer, no. which three. means that he could have created contact. Sure. He could have gotten to the free throw line. He could have thrown a hook shot. He could have threw, He could have done a lot of things that Manu Ginobili, a younger Manu, mm -hmm. Manu Ginobili, would have normally did. Yep. But at the same time, in a haphazard moment, Things tend to happen from time to time. This is what happens. It happens to the best of them. And again, we know what kind of series this is going to be. And I love it. I love the fact that Oklahoma City stepped up and yep. reminded us of how great they can be against greatness. And so I applaud them for that. They deserve a lot of credit for it. And now we go from here. Yep. Look, I'm, I'm trying to look for a little good news takeaway from <clears throat> last night. And I will give my Spurs this. As I told you, they fell behind 13 right away in the first quarter. Just looked deadheaded and lifeless, especially that first unit. Then they, they roar back. They, they're down, what, three at half. And right away in the third quarter, they're lifeless again. The starting unit just looks deadheaded, and they fall behind by 11. Going to the fourth quarter, they're only down one, and they immediately fall behind by nine. And I'm thinking each time I thought game over, game over, game over, and they roared and scratched and clawed and fought back every time to get back in the game. I will give them that. That's the character, the backbone of this team I saw all year. That's the team that won 67 games, but they couldn't get over the hump. Why not? I'll tell you why. Kevin Durant's just too good. You know, Kevin Durant made some big hoops, and I got to give Deion Waiters this despite his offensive foul that should have been called, did he not hit a big three with a couple of minutes left from the corner? Remember that one? And we yeah. always say, well, Durant and Westbrook don't trust him. Well, they trusted him on that play. His he, only shot of the game. He ripped it, the only shot he made, yeah. Good for you, because that was a huge shot in that game, and Durant, with 33 seconds left, made another big shot. So Durant is special, man. Yeah. Durant is special. special. Durant showed no you why. Yeah. Durant showed you why everybody's wondering where he's going to go in free agency because he could very well be the difference for a lot of teams. Oh, he's that gifted, and that's what the reason I, I, is. I looked at him standing next to Lamarcus last night, and I'm pretty sure Lamarcus is six eleven. I'm pretty sure, yeah. and it looked yeah. to me like Kevin was an inch taller. Is that possible? Could he be close to mm. seven? I don't know. I don't know. Ah, uh, it looked like about, it to me. He's about 6'11", six, 7'6", six wingspan, can pull up from 30. 30. Can pull up from 30. Yep. 30. And everybody wants a piece, so the mm. Thunder tie it up. Heck, speaking, the, the Spurs want a piece, right? maybe. I don't yeah. know. No, for sure. Yeah. But speaking of KD and Westbrook, is there trouble in paradise after that exchange we saw last night? You're seeing it right here. The guys will analyze it. 
That's next.